Okay, so in a minute, we're going to be doing a problem that I'm doing by request uh, from a commenter whose YouTube username was Jess Fang. Uh, it was about a week or two ago. I don't really remember. It's been hard to keep track. But more on that in a minute with the problem request form. But it's going to be the 2016 AMC 12B problem 20, which is the one this individual asked for. Um, but it's also the 10B problem 22. Before we get there, though, we've got a couple things. Number one, a story. Everybody likes stories, right? Okay, so this is a good story. You don't like this. All right, so there's these two friends, right? Alex and Henry. And Henry wants to go to Harvard because, you know, dream school and all that. Alex, meanwhile, his dad was an architect. And so he wants to go to uh, be an architect. And he found this school on, online. I'll show it to you real quick. It's called Wood University. And it's specifically for a community, an architect, an engineer, a builder. And so he wanted to just go to that. It's an online school, apparently. And so there's Harvard U and, you know, uh, Wood University here, right? And so uh, they had this joke amongst them where whenever there was a substitute teacher, whether it be math or science, they would call them sub-math or sub-science or something like that. They had another joke where they called the counselors at their school scribes because they found it in a history textbook about some name that was used long ago for some people they called them scribes and so they called the counselors at their school scribes but one day there was a substitute counselor and this counselor was given the task of going to the classes of the seniors were in and asking them what college or university they planned to attend and so Henry goes, you know, and he says, uh, I'll take Harvard University, please. But you're never going to guess what Alex said. Well, when the counselor, who was the substitute counselor, asked him where he would like to go to school, strangely enough, he pointed down at his left shoe, which is incidentally at the bottom left of the camera angle. And he said, would you please subscribe? Okay, that wasn't really a story. It's actually a request. Would you please subscribe? It's right. It's okay. It wasn't that great, but I, I thought it. I thought it was amusing. All right, so I came up with that just to ask you to click the button down here. Okay, so most of you have probably already subscribed. Actually, you haven't. Like seventy-seven percent of my watch time comes from people who haven't haven't subscribed. You guys should get to subscribing. All right, you'll get all the good videos that way and the dumb stories or clever clever stories. Let's call them clever. Okay, so uh, other announcements. Um, I'm getting so many problem requests, it's hard to keep track. And then if I don't have time to do them immediately, they get buried in like three weeks of comments and I can't find them without doing a lot of legwork and sifting through comments trying to find problem requests. So I decided at your request actually to make a problem request form, right? And so it's in the description. It's a form from Google. You will fill it out. It asks for your email, your YouTube username, the problem year and test number, and the problem you're requesting. Um, the email is so that I can email you and tell you uh, when your problem has been filmed, in case you haven't subscribed yet. right? And so I can inform you of that when it comes up. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the emails. You're not going to be added to any mailing list, uh, anything like that. So it's just for that. Um, also, it's to I want to keep the limit on the requests. Try to do no more than one every two weeks. That way, everybody gets a chance to do requests. And it's just going to go on a list that will be organized that the other people won't be able to see that will show which problems were requested or whatnot. Um, and that way, I can keep track of in what order they came in. I can't do every problem, but I'll see what I can do. All right, the next thing was pie pants. What are, what are pie pants? Well, I'm glad you asked. Um, I found these cool pants online, and if I lift up my leg a little bit, they've got a pie symbol here. Pie degrees. I thought it was pretty cool. I picked up a pair for myself. I'll include a link to those in the description if you're interested in pie pants. Uh, I, they're not made by me or anything like that. They're just kind of cool. I mean, it says pie degrees, which is kind of weird because pie is usually used for radians, but sometimes you get those tricky teachers that put it for degrees. Okay, uh, last two weeks game plan, really important. Um, we are down to about, I think, 16 days or something like that. Um, this is my recommendation. You don't have to follow it. The Saturday before the test and the Tuesday before the test. The test is on Thursday, February 4th, right? F4 for now. Um, the Tuesday would be February 2nd, and the Saturday, whatever that is, three days prior, uh, January something. 
31st, I think, uh, something. First, uh, first would be, I don't even want to think about it. 30th, 31st, something like that. Anyhow, I would do tests on this day and this day. But let's say you've got a big project due on Wednesday and you can't do a test on Tuesday, you don't have time. Fine, move it to Monday. I would not do tests on Wednesday. I, I would not. You're, at that point, you've been studying for the last year or so many years, you are not going to significantly change your score. Instead, what you should be doing on that Wednesday before the test and the morning of the test is reviewing all of the key concepts you've learned and added to your small notebook. That review, even though you know a lot of them now, perhaps read every single one multiple times. Go through that notebook over and over and over again so that you can more easily think of these ideas that you've jotted down that you said to yourself at an earlier point in time was important. You want to review that so you have them ready to go for the test. You'll get far more out of that than you would doing another test on a Wednesday, right? So I would not do practice tests on Wednesday. I usually tell students to save the two most recent tests, the 2020 A and B, whether you're doing the AMC 10 or the AMC 12, because those are the most recent and sometimes concepts carry over. One more note on that, 2021 is 25 squared minus four. So as such, it's 25 squared minus two squared, which is 25, um, uh, wait, 25 squared, 45 squared, 45 squared, minus two squared. That would be 45 plus two and 45 minus two, which incidentally is 43 times 47. Why? Because sometimes they have prime factorizations and you should know this going in. If you had to prime factor on the test and hadn't thought about this, it's probably not gonna come up, but just in case, if you had to, you're spending a good time to get to 43. You're like, three doesn't go in, five doesn't go in, seven doesn't go in. You're gonna be there for a long time, probably burning about a minute and a half to two minutes easy checking to see if whatever big number it is or what numbers go into 2021. So uh, memorize the prime factorization just in case. That's it for that. Also, you're gonna wanna watch the Amy Mindset video. I will link it in the description as well. Probably watch that around Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe Wednesday, the same day you're studying your small notebook. Um, it's just a review of all of the mental constructs and thought processes you wanna have to have success and get to an Amy qualification. If you haven't seen that video yet, it's usually best to watch it in close proximity to the taking of the test. Okay, so then what else? I'm gonna be doing an AMC 10A live solve. I'm gonna pre-record it this time because I didn't really like doing it live. And then uh, that will also allow me to film all of the questions uh, regular way like this after I've done the live solve for myself. And so I'm gonna pre-record it. I'm gonna, what is it, instant premiere on the Friday February 5th at 6 p.m. I believe there's not a moratorium on test questions until only one day. Like the next day, I think you're allowed to discuss it. Um, if that's not true, it'll get moved to Saturday or Monday or whatever it is. But assuming that there's only the day of the test that you can't discuss it, then the next day it would be uh, done as a, a premiere where I will talk to you guys in comments while you're watching and you know, answer any questions that I can during that session. But don't ask excessive questions, you know, just about the test because I want people to focus on the solving part of it. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, we're gonna get to the problem, let's go. All right, and now for the actual problem that was requested. Here we go. A set of teams held a round robin tournament in which every team played every other team exactly once, okay? So every team is playing once, almost like handshakes, right? You could do something, choose two to get, you know, what, uh, how many total games were played. Um, but we don't actually need that for this problem, so don't go using that. Every team won 10 games and lost 10 games. Okay, let's say you're team A, okay? If you won 10 and lost 10, you had to play 20 games. And since they played every team, played every other team exactly once, there must be team A plus 20 other teams. That would mean that there are 21 total teams, okay? So then, uh, we'll need that A in a minute, I'll keep it there. Uh, there were no ties, right? So no ties, only wins and losses, no ties. Great, I'm worried about that. How many sets of three teams, and they've got A, B, and C in the fancy brackets. Uh, funny story, when I was in high school, I couldn't draw these. Uh, the teacher would do them so effortlessly and I would watch, like, what does he do? So I just scribbled. 
And it worked. He accepted it and didn't complain, which was great because I had no idea how to do that. So you might be one of those students who can't draw them either. I recommend scribbling. It will, it will be accepted most likely. Okay, but uh, later I figured out how because something, I don't know, you get, it became easier or something. All right, so uh, how many th sets of three teams were there? This would be a subset of the 21 in which A beat B, B beat C, and C beat A. So kind of like this, A is going to beat B, B is going to beat C, and C is going to beat A. How many are there? Well, this one is actually going to be quite hard to think about. So what we want to do is think, okay, well, um, there's got to be for any group of three teams, any group of three, there's really only two possibilities. If it doesn't look like this, right? The only other possibility would be that one team beats two of the other two teams. Um, so if A beat B and A beat D, and then it doesn't really matter who won between B and D, right? If B beat D, fine. Either way, this is the bad kind and this is the good kind, right? This is good because that's what we want. We're trying to find this. But these are the only two possibilities. So maybe we could say, all right, if I take um, the bad plus the good, if I added up all the groups of three that are bad, where one team beats two, and all the groups of three that are good, where it makes kind of this circular, you know, everybody beats the person next to them or to their right or whatnot, then that has to equal the total number of ways that I can group three teams. And grouping three teams, we don't care about the order precisely. So I think we all know that uh, you're going to take the 21 and you want three. So it must be that I get 21 choose three. So does that make sense? We've got any group of three teams has to fall into one of these two categories. Um, it cannot just simply uh, be, there's no other options. It can only be one of these two. Now, it doesn't have to be that A beat D, it could be that D beat A. That's fine. It doesn't have to be, you know, that has worked that way, but there will always be for every group of three, one of these will happen where one team beats two teams or uh, it goes around in a circle and each team beats both. Okay, do you accept that? If you accept that, if you haven't accepted it, pause it and think about it and then continue the video afterward. Okay, so all we're gonna do is now complementary counting. It, we would get what we want if we subtract what we don't want. So we just want to do that the good, or the answer in this case, is going to be 21 choose 3 um, minus all the kind we don't want. And a lot of times I think about how am I going to count this? And I kind of get, oh, I don't know. Don't think about that. Just go ahead and do 21 choose 3 real quick. Once you feel you've got this down, then it becomes a little bit easier to get that one. Maybe. You can kind of like psych your brain into thinking you're doing well. So let's do 21 choose 3. That's 21 factorial over 18 factorial, three factorial. I don't usually write this on my test. I would usually write 21 times 20 times 19, and I don't even write the three or the 18 factorial because I know it's about to cancel. If you don't understand why, I just add it right here. You can stop writing factorials at any point and add the exclamation, then cancel and cancel. And then three is going to go into 21 seven times, two will go into 20 10 times. And so we're gonna have seven times 19, seven times 20 uh, would be 140. We will subtract seven to get 133, right? If you don't understand it, seven times 20 minus one, 140 minus seven, 133 times 10, throw a zero on the end. Okay, so this is what we would get if all of them looked like this, and they put this as a trap answer. I wonder how many people got that trap answer. You can check the statistics and find out. I don't actually know. So, 1330 trap answer for sure, because we didn't take away the bad kind. So, the question would be, how many of the bad kind are there? And so, that would be every time you choose a team, like say Team A, since there are 10 teams that they beat, then there must be 10 choose two ways to make a group with A, such that the other two teams were both beaten by A, right? And so then 10 choose two is 10 times nine over two, it's 45, but we didn't have to use team A. 
we could use any one of the 21 total teens. And so that would be 21 times 45. I'm gonna do that as 45 times 20 plus one. This is 945. So now if I simply take 1330 minus 945, add 55 to get to 1000. I don't subtract, I add, it's faster. Add 55 to get to 1000, add 330 more, you're gonna be at 385. A couple of notes on this. You might be wondering, yeah, but how do we know that we're gonna get that the other groups are gonna be this? You know because there's only two kinds and you know all of these definitely exist where A did in fact beat two teams or B beat two teams or C beat two teams. These are definite and since these are the only possibilities, you're left with the rest must look like this. I wanted to point out this is not just my solution. I have expanded upon and more carefully explained the two solutions that are already on the AOPS forums. Again, a lot of times the solutions on there don't explain the nuance and the subtlety and the small details. And I try to do that here, which is why you should subscribe. Okay, yeah, you guys have a good one. Don't forget what I said about the beginning, the preparation for the final two weeks. Good luck. I wanna hear success stories in the comments, but no flexing overkill. Just let me know that you did well or you qualified or you're satisfied and all that kind of stuff. All right, you guys have a good one.